Today we're going to talk about Sampo and the Q2 report with analyst Sauli Villain. Hi. Hi. My first question, why was the result so hard to predict? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, it, it is true that the consensus estimates were kind of all over the place and obviously the, the, the reported result was much, much higher than the consensus estimated, especially in, in each side. Uh, well, um, there is usually in, in a big picture sample is super easy to predict. If you like take like a one or two year perspective, it's actually it's uh, the consensus actually is really sharp there and it's it's kind of, it's not too difficult. But in the short term, obviously, there is two components. There is the investment income. And then obvio obviously now when the interest rates are rising, we are seeing the uh, possible changes in the discount rate, which can ac actually affect a lot in a one-time sense on Sampo's, Sampo's, uh, or in, in Sampo's uh, profitability. So th those are basically the two it's it, with factors which are hard to quantify the investment income, the, the exact amount, it's really hard to hard to predict on quarterly basis basis since you don't know the moves what Sampo's investment team is doing there and then obviously the, the changes in the discount rate it's it's also kind of hard to quantify the exact amount how much Sampo is changing the rate and how it affects affects the liability side basically mm -hmm. so yeah so those are the things but the, but then again if you look at the broader picture the Sampo is still it really, really predictable in that, yeah. se that sense. So it's it's more of on a, a quarterly quarterly thing here. Yeah, on a quarterly basis. Yeah, right. us yeah. usually consensus. By the way, it's 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 on the right ball, ball, right right field, so to speak. This was kind of a kind of a kind of a special quarter in that sense. Okay, uh, if really showed once again, mm -hmm. and it's a real crown jewel. We've yeah. talked about this before, but could you, with some short comments, but yeah. just. Yeah, w well, the Sign result, yeah, result was fantastic in the in in every possible way. Basically, if once again, as I printed in the report, that if once again showed why it is the best best insurance company in the Nordic, at least from the owner's perspective, at, at least. So, I mean, the growth was really really strong. Obvi obviously, uh, uh, they they uh, obviously the price hikes. Is is a major driver there, but they are also also the volumes are growing. So if, if it, so, it, it shows that if is if uh, if if is in really good shape in that sense also. Then uh, on the uh, on the underwriting result, it was it was well. Uh, I don't really know what word to use since it was so good basically. And yeah. y yes, there was some not one time items, but I mean the, the there was there was exceptionally small amount of large claims in that so the quarter was like it, it was like too good in, in that sense normally normally there are is more large large claims and then obviously the discount rate helped a bit there since now since during the past 10 years Sampo has basically suffered from the discount or if is during from the discount disc, di discount rate going lower 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 so mm -hmm. the liabilities grow 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 but now when the interest are coming up the liabilities come down so basically that's that boosts the result but but in the operational sense, it was it, there. There was nothing to complain from the analyst yeah. side, so it was it was it was fantastic result one, one, once again. And no, not there was not anything like special things or anything. It was just just excellent ex excellent performance overall. I think you used the words hard to find any fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's that sums it up pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So what about? Um, the other segments. Well, <laughs> there is not mm, too much to say about the other segments. Obviously, the if represents like majority of the value of sample sample sample. But we are talking about plus seventy percent or so of the value. But other segments, uh, the actually the, pro the 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 results were like mainly slightly below what were expected. Obviously, top number was we already knew what mm -hmm. was coming from there, and obviously mandatum the quarterly quarterly. Uh, that, like predicting the quarterly result is like impossible to be honest, since it, it's uh, driven by the by the investment income mainly. But uh, uh, but is there, there is really not not, not much to, much, much to say. The mandatum's operational performance was good. Uh, Hastings, uh, even though the market situation is really 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 difficult in the UK, Hastings did okay, you could say. So 
So overall, 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 okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing special. Basically, basically, there. No, yeah. Because if it's still the biggest driver. Yeah, if it, if it's if it's the driver, if if it's the main value, and obviously, if there would be something drastic, obviously, you need to look at the other segments, of course. But the thing in this quarter, there was that was business as usual, so okay. so to so to speak. So not not much to say, really. Yeah. You mentioned Top Gun, Mark, already <laughs> there in one sentence, and I, uh, I really have yeah. to go there yeah. because we were kind of expecting that m something might would yeah. happen. Yeah. Might happen, but nothing mm. did. Or yeah, they, somebody didn't buy Top Gun. I was, I was fairly sure that they would, since uh, if we just recap a little bit, little bit, if somebody is not aware, aware, aware. So in Q4, somebody did a major, major change. In 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 their thinking, I guess, since they they finally purchased some shares of Top Denmark from the open market, they haven't done it in years, and they have always complained that the share price is too high, etc. And then they actually started talking about synergies, etc. Yeah, yeah. uh, so obviously, everybody get get their hopes up, and now they okay, finally are doing it. Then uh, in Q1, the share price climbed up, and they purchased like like tiny tiny amount of shares not not like in, in the wrong side of the comma so to speak obviously uh, top down market share price has come down somewhat after that so obviously i thought that that they probably would buy some more but they didn't they did they didn't buy a single share share and obviously uh, the, uh, and, and then the then the reason is obvious since the price is too high uh, I, the uh, ceo said that in, in said that loud and clear yesterday mm, yeah. but as we speak, uh, sp spoke uh, earlier on the on the on the longer vid video about Sampo, the, the problem is that it's a kind of chicken egg problem. Since everybody knows that Sampo wants to buy, and basically it, it kind of artificially lifts top down like share price, which is not good for Sampo. So it's it's a difficult situation, and that's why I thought that the, the easiest way to to break out of this uh, situation is that you just buy from the market whenever the price is at least on the somewhat decent level or so mm -hmm. and then you just you and and more you more you acquire shares less there is to acquire and then finally when there is like i don't know let's say 10 percent or something left it's really doesn't matter how much you mm -hmm. pay from them since then the synergies are yeah. so on so close but yeah but uh, but the then nothing happened but still the big picture is they something will happen but Obviously, uh, like me and the, uh, all of my colleagues uh, on the Sampos analyst field have been saying the same thing for the past uh, maybe seven years or something. So <laughs> but <laughs> but something will happen yeah. so eventually. So yeah, eventually, eventually, eventually it will happen. Eventually. Yeah, but yeah. I had to go there. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then. Yeah. So, um, what about the solvency? Because it's on a really high level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the solvency was actually uh, one of the posi uh, positive surprises there. I, th I, th I think that actually the the solvency and the the e amount of excess capital capital which it straight re relates to was the main reason why market were so excited yesterday. The share in some perspe perspective share rose notably usually some only moves like a couple of percents mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of was a big move in some some perspective I, and i think it was mainly because of the solvency solvency thing obviously now when they have divested nordea it increased uh, it it lifted up the solvency clearly so obviously since and and then then uh, actually the the interest rates also also help there so the solvency is is way above the level what sambo is aiming for and it clearly states Obviously, under, underlies that they have a lot, lot, lots and lots of excess capital still, even though they have returned a lot of capital to shareholders already. So, what do you think the plan going forward would be? On the on the excess capital side, yeah. uh, well, uh, they have well. Obviously, the plan is kind of laid out already. They they have said that they they will do do that. They have started the new buyback, the one yeah, one billion yeah. buyback. Then they said that they will. Uh, the management will uh, propose a dividend or buyback for the board and in Q4 obviously it's kind of clear to me that it will be dividend since they have done like uh, buyback dividend buyback dividend so obviously it, it makes it would make sense to give another another dividend out uh, and the amount the dividend or buyback whichever the, what the Q and which will be announced in Q4 uh, the amount is still like out there uh, at, at our papers we are expecting one euro per share dividend there uh, 
Sampo could maybe throw out more, but it again depends on the top down margins. Obviously, more since uh, since more capital Sampo Sampo deploys out for back, back to shareholders, the less room to maneuver they have on on top down mark side. In that, since obviously if they would like like to buy the top down mark, it, it it would take it up, up a lot of capital. But uh, yeah, but I think the the billion billion buyback now the 500 million uh, dividend uh, announced Q4 then uh, one more one more uh, one more dividend uh, payout uh, excess dividend payout next year maybe like may maybe maybe they will announce it in Q4 2023 or so and then then we are then they, they they still have some excess capital, but it, it starts to depend when they get out of the P investments and what kind of valuations they get there. So after after this, the next two billion or so or so, the the um, there is still some more. They could deploy some more, but now, then they are close to finish line, so to speak. So the plan plan is basically out out there. And if 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 they will, if they not if they not don't acquire top Denmark, then the then they will return it all to shareholders. That's pretty much it. Yeah, those are the alternatives yeah. on the table. Uh, what about risks? Well, <laughs> they not 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 has not, not really hasn't changed since we last last yeah. last talk about Sambo Sambo's risk profile is really really low. I think it's actually one of the lowest in the whole uh, whole Helsinki stock exchange in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, obviously, Sampo is not immune for the for the uh, capital markets. So if the capital market fluctuates heavily, it affects their investment income, etc. Et, et and then obviously, when, as we spoke la 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 last time, when the interest rates, if, if they continue to rise, it will lift investment investment incomes for the all players in the Nordic, and that could land uh, uh, could uh, lead to a situation where some players are willing to sacrifice their combined race or underwriting result in order to get more market share. Yeah. And that would be kind of a bad thing since then it would it would increase the price competition and obviously it would push down the underwriting result and obviously the investment result is not as as high quality as the as the but that that we, we talk but that, yeah. that, that those are the major that there is nothing nothing not there is no nothing nothing new 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 in 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 that, in, in that sense no no yeah. no so and we really recommend the longer video we did yeah yeah definitely Sambo, definitely yeah I'll put yeah. the link down below from now on Sambo is actually a pure we talked about it last time yeah. already but the pure insurance business so yeah. what about the valuation and how do you see it forward well valuation it it, it starts to be in the right field, so to speak. I, mm -hmm. I don't see Sampo being uh, really underval undervalued anymore, but, but the, uh, it, the valuation starts to reflect the high quality of the company as we speak. Uh, we still value Sampo through uh, sum of parts mainly, since obviously the sum of parts like it, 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 it gives you, it, it, it gives uh, since, since Sampo has different kind of businesses in it, since it, like the life business and the PNC, so it uh, in, and the investments are there, so it gives. It, it, it's it's I, I think it's a it's right way to do. Obviously, we also do peer. We, we, we compare it to peers, then the multiples, multiples, etc. Et but uh, from the sum of parts side, there is a slight upside, but not not much. Uh, if you look at the absolute multiples compared to peers, uh, they start to be at the right level. Mm -hmm. Refle reflecting the high value of high, high quality, I mean, of Sampo. So, so, uh, so, so the valuation, uh, yeah. So, so, so basically, uh, I, uh, I think the majority of of the return what investors are getting from Sampo during the upcoming years will come from dividends, basically. Yeah. And 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 from buybacks in in that sense also, and so so in but but uh, but they, they but so th and. When you compare those to low risk profile of Sampo, it's still we still uh, we still kept accumulate recommendation there, but but as we said on the report, the obviously the 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 the, the, the upside upside has 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 narrowed clearly after the stock has has had a good run run there and 
and, and the investors need, need to understand that the, that, 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 that you, you may rely on, on dividends and buybacks from here on. It, I, I really don't see the share like rocketing like tens of tens of percents from here since it since since the more or less the if is now if if's full value is now reflected in the Sampos Sampos share price. Yeah. So yes, it has found its level. Yeah, yeah, and that's obviously obviously good good thing that 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 it how it should be in the capital markets, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Thank you, Salu Ulein, for these comments.